Hey YouTubers, I am the Taylorette and welcome. This week I will be focusing on how I make my petticoats for my 18th century dresses. Okay, so here's the deal. I already have my pieces cut out, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. You really don't need a pattern if you already have your own me measurements for your body. It's super, super simple. I have two pieces and I have a front and a back piece. There is a difference. So how I did this was I measured from my waist, which is basically the smallest part of your waist, which starts just under your last rib, which is right here. It's not at your belly button, it's above your belly button. So what I did is I measured from there down to the floor of where I want the skirt to go. I like the skirt to go just above my toes, like touching the top of my toes, not the floor, but my toes. But for the bottom with the hem, I like to take it up two inches because I fold it twice at one inches. So the customer's waist from waist to floor is 37. So I cut it at 39 to leave the hem at the bottom. So that's for the front piece. Set this aside. Now this is the back piece. Now there's one thing you have to consider with the back is that there's a bum roll. And when the skirt goes over the bum roll, it goes up because the bum roll is sticking out and it takes some of that length away. So what I did was I did the same measurement. I just measured to add two inches at the bottom and then I added an inch right where the fold is because these, these are cut on the fold. This is just the width of the fabric. And then I made this the same length as it would be without the extra inch. I like to use my serger, but you can use any method that you want. You could do a French seam or you can just do zigzag or you can serge the edges and then sew them together. Either way, I just like to use a serger because that's what I use for my business. I have my back piece and I like to start from, I actually like to start from the bottom and go to the top. So if you start at the bottom, everything gets even at the bottom and when you go to hem, it's all even and you can just straighten it out from the top. Ideally, you would like everything to line up, but just in case things don't don't, it's better to start from the bottom so you don't have a crooked hem. And you're probably wondering why didn't you cut off the selvage? Well, I don't really mind because it gets cut off on the serger anyway. Mine has a knife. Before you go sewing all the way down, I leave about eight inches unsewn towards the top of the skirt. And do the same to the other side as well. So the next step would be to press but we're gonna press to the back skirt. And now we're ready to hem. Measure one inch. I folded it all the way around the bottom of the skirt one inch, and now we're going to flip it one more inch. Stick this under here, put my needle down, right next to this edge, and whiz away. We're just about ready to start pleating the skirt, but before we do that, we have to finish off this opening here, even these out here, because I think that was from when I originally cut the skirt, I had it crooked. All right, now I am going to fold this over one quarter of an inch, like so, and then fold it over again one quarter of an inch. And we will do this to the same to this side as well. There's another side of a slit too on the other side of the skirt. And do the same exact thing to this one. Stick it under here like we did before. And you want to stitch right along the edge. Now we're on to the fun part of actually pleating the skirt at the top. So this is the raw edge at the waist and the hem is down there. So the next step is we're gonna find the middle of this. So we're gonna fold it and place a pin right in the middle, bring it back out. I like to stick my ruler underneath so I can just pin on top. And from the center of the pin, you want to find an inch and a half on each side of the pin and place a pin there. On all my skirts, I like to have a center box pleat. Not too wide, but about three inches. So that was where the inch and a half on each side is. I'm going to find, tentatively, it doesn't have to be perfect. Visually, you wanna see what looks square is what we're focusing on. And I'm folding it, and the fold is going, the end of the fold is going to the center of this pin right here. And you wanna pin it to keep it in place. 
So you want to measure down here and see if it's still an inch and a half down here. It's a little bit more, so I'm going to take it out a little bit, pin it, and I pin things to death. Some people th might think this is ridiculous. You can find your own thing, but this really helps me to keep everything in place and linear so that when I sew the waistband down at the top, things don't get shifted around. It's all straight, and then when I let it all out, it lays very nicely. And do the same exact thing to the other side, the other half of the front box pleat. Pull this underneath, like this. It's meeting in the back, like that. There's a little, I think you would call that a kick pleat, kind of. And measure an inch and a half to make sure it is, in fact, an inch and a half. And it is. Now that we have our front box pleat ready, we're ready to start doing the other sides. We're wanting to find the waist measurement. So say my waist measurement at the smallest part is 26 inches with a corset on, loosely put on. So we're gonna wanna make the waist wider. So if it's 26 inches, we're wanting to do a total, let's do 29 inches. So let's divide 29 in half. And we're basically pleating just half of the skirt right now. So if you cut that in half, that is about 14 and a half inches. So that's what we want the length of this half to be. So we're gonna cut 14 and a half in half, <laughs> and it's gonna be seven and a half inches. So from this center pin here, over here is gonna be seven and a quarter, and over here it's gonna be seven and a quarter to create 14 and a half inches. And this is really not as complicated as it looks, but you kinda of have to fidget with it. Sometimes I go and I pleat it all the way down, and then I realize, oh, it's not seven and a quarter. So I have to go back and take out all the pins and redo it. I'm gonna fold it under a little bit extra, just kind of at the top of my head, kinda of go, ah. Eh. I want the pleats to be kind of a little bit more like this. I like that look. There's really no rules as to how thick these pleats should be within reason, I guess. Make sure it's even. As you're folding it under, don't just fold it under. Make sure all the way down it's even. You don't want it to be going crooked because then you have a skirt that's fanning out and you don't want that. And this I'm not as picky about my measurements. I feel on the other side and I go, oh yeah, it's folded over about that much all the way down. Yep, seven and a quarter. Perfect. Leave those pins in there and start on the other side. I pleated the other side and let's see if it actually measures up to 40, 14 and a half. Oh yeah. 14 and a half. And we're basically gonna do this to the same, the same exact thing to the other side. They're both the same with the pleats in the front and the back. We have our petticoat all pinned together now, and now we're ready to create the waistband. So remember how we did 14 and a half for each side? Well, we're gonna cut a strip that is 15 and a half because we wanna add an inch because we're gonna fold the sides in at a half an inch each. And we'll cut it at two and a half inches wide. We have our two pieces here. I pressed this side in on a half an inch and this side on a half an inch. And now I'm gonna take one side and fold it over about five eighths all the way down, just one side, not both sides, just one side. And now it needs to be pinned to both sides of this. Pin it on each side, find the outsides first, and then start pinning in the middle. And flip it and do the same exact thing to the other side. We'll stitch at five eighths at a regular stitch length. Don't just put it through. Check and make sure that everything is laying flat in the back. Go ahead and flip this over and pin it down because we're gonna stitch it down just like this. Do that to both sides. We're gonna do the same thing like we did with the other one. Just stitch right along the edge. We'll need to attach some ties to the top waistband. You want to cut four of these at 18 inches long. Four strips are cut and ready to be used. We're ready to insert these into the sides. I like to fold it twice like this. And then I'll take the waistband, the end of the waistband, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I pucker it open like that and stick this in there. And I like to use a pin to help it get through and then take it to the machine and stitch it down and go back and forth to keep it from coming out. And the reason why I folded it twice is because if you just stick it in there 
with the open end, it'll end up fraying over time and it'll break off. And you'll wanna do that to all the four corners that you have on your waistband. It's completely finished, but we still have our pins in the pleats. So I'm gonna take these out and this is what it looks like. And I will put a, another skirt attached to the bodice to go over, which is called, I think it's called polonaise. I probably pronounced that wrong. I guess you could go without it if you wanted to. Thank you for watching this video and I do hope that you found it helpful. And if so, please click the like button below and click the subscribe button as well because I will have a lot more content coming out in the future. So I will see you later. I don't know what else to say. Why can't I just say it right? Okay. I'm so tired of saying the wrong thing. Okay. I mean, why can't I get right? Okay, we're stopping this.